Welcome everyone to the Q&A session for our upcoming course, Energy Medicine Yoga for Healing, the seven week journey to overcome trauma, anxiety, and stress for an empowered, joyful life. I'm Lisa Bunnies, and I'm really looking forward to this Q&A conversation for the SHIP Network, where we'll explore the teachings of Lauren Walker and address questions about her upcoming seven-week course, Energy Medicine Yoga for Healing, which begins Monday, February 24th. Later, I'll explain how you can participate in the course, even if you can't be there live, but first, I want to introduce our guest. Lauren Walker is the author of Energy Medicine Yoga, Amplify the Healing Power of Your Yoga Practice, and the Energy Medicine Yoga Prescription. Both books won the Nautilus Silver Award for Best Mind-Body Publication. Lauren, who's been teaching yoga and meditation since 1997, has been featured many times in Yoga Journal, Mantra Magazine, and Yoga Digest. A feature article about her yoga work was also published in the New York Times, and she was recently named one of the top 100 most influential yoga teachers in America. And in just a few minutes, we're going to open up for your questions. But first, I want to welcome Lauren, who's going to begin our time together by leading us in an opening practice. Welcome, Lauren. It's great to see you this afternoon. Thank you, Lisa. It's great to be here. And welcome to everybody that's joining in on this call. I'm looking forward to answering all of your questions. And let's start with just a little bit of a grounding exercise. So feet actually on the earth or on the floor, if you can do that, or even if you're sitting in a high chair or something, put your feet back against the rim of the chair so that your feet are actually touching something. You can have your eyes open or closed. If you prefer open, just have the gaze be soft so that it's not so pointed and directed. And let's take a deep breath in the nose. And out the mouth. Cross your hands in front of your chest and just drop off the collarbones right into that hollow space underneath the collarbones and just press a little bit. Just a gentle pressure and release and keep that same breathing in the nose and out the mouth. If that point is sore at all, maybe you want to massage a little bit more. And if it doesn't feel good to be touching yourself right there, you can just do this in the field. Just have your hands in that location and just kind of pressing in, in the nose, out the mouth. And then just reach your hand up to the opposite shoulder, give a squeeze, and just draw across the body to the opposite hip. And again, you can do this in the field, squeeze the shoulder and slice across to the opposite hip. Do that one more time each side, one more breath in the nose. Out the mouth. Good, then just shake your hands off. So I hope right now that you're feeling calm and centered and a little bit more grounded maybe than you started. And I just want to do a little experiment with you. So I'd like you to bring to mind something that happened recently, today, maybe yesterday, that was really stressful for you. Just think about something that was stressful. Maybe you were scrolling through Facebook and you saw a post that really kind of triggered you or you had an argument with someone in your family or you brought all your groceries home and the bag ripped just as you were getting out of the car. Just think of something and just feel that, how that stress is running through your body just by thinking about it. Maybe if some of you are even tuned in, you can feel your heart start to beat a little bit faster. Just keep thinking about that stress. And then I just want you to take a hand and bring it over your forehead like you're taking your temperature. And take your other hand and right at the base of the throat in that little hollow there, one or two fingers. And think about your stress again. Have the eyes open gently or closed, and the bag rips, the milk bottle smashes, the yogurt container opens, the apples bounce all over. The dog runs up and gets mud all over your new dress. And just notice now if thinking that same stressor, you don't feel that same stress response. Maybe you feel a little bit calmer. 
Everything starts to settle. And so for those of you that tuned into the call that I did with Stephen, when you learn these two points, I want you to really learn them for yourself. And you notice in that call that when I was talking about the most stressful part of my life, the most traumatic parts, I didn't hold these points. And some of you noticed that I went into a stress response because telling your story, whether it's the broken bottle of milk and the dog paws or some kind of serious trauma, you tell that story out loud, your, your he, ears hear it again, your body hears it again, and you can go back into that stress again. And you can forget, oh, right, if I just hold this point here and this point here, I don't have to go into stress again. So this is why we don't tell our stories in this course. We work with the energy. And that was a kind of a, a one-off that I told my story because I wanted you to really know that this work is real and it's powerful and it can save your life if you've gone through some horrific experience or if you're just perpetually stressed. And if you don't take the course, that's okay. If you just take these two things with you, your life will get better. I promise you, your stress levels will go down and you will feel better. I was a little nervous right before this call. I could feel that amping up. And right now I just feel like, oh, I'm hanging out here with my best friend online, ready to have a chat. That's what this does. So you can release, shake it off. You can use that anytime. You can keep your hands there um, during this call if you like, or anytime you're even watching a scary movie. It's a real incredible transformative tool. And so if you take nothing else away, find your breath again and use those two holds and, um, but I do hope you take the course with me because I'd love to share space and time with you. And um, I'll turn it back over to Lisa and start to answer some of your questions. All right. Th thank you, Lauren, for sharing that. I can just imagine going through the grocery store and everybody walking around like this, steering with their elbows. <laughs> going well, down know, the freeway trying to do this. <laughs> One of the things that I mentioned with this one at the throat hollow is like if you wear a necklace or a charm, you can kind of be playing with the charm and sort of holding it and then with your fingers there. So it doesn't have to be as obvious. You don't have to do both of those. This one can be sort of a bigger stressor, but you can you can be sitting in a business meeting just like this and nobody needs to know what you're doing. So that's I love this one. Yeah. Perfect. I'm sure that's going to come in handy for a lot of people. Um, well, so we have the rest of our time together to uh, dive into our viewers' questions for Lauren as we prepare for her upcoming course. Again, that's called Energy Medicine Yoga for Healing, and it begins Monday, February 24th. And if you want to check out the website and learn more about the seven-week course, you can visit emyogacourse.com to see the full description, and you can also register while you're there if you'd like. So let's go ahead and get started with some questions. Uh, if you have a question for Lauren, go ahead and type it in. I'll be happy to read it out loud. And in the meantime, we've already got a few questions gathered. So let's go ahead and start with those. Um, we've got a question here from Megan who wants to know, uh, would you explain how trauma gets stuck in the body and how it begins moving up and out with EM yoga? That's a great question. Trauma gets stuck in the body when it isn't processed. And what I mean by that, and what you're going to start to learn in this course, is the energetic and the electrical nature of everything, literally of the universe, the energetic nature of the universe. We are not solid beings. We are 99.99% space. Energy packets vibrating frequency, sound, light. That's actually what we are. And so when we have a traumatic experience, the energy from that affects the energy of what is the discrete being that is you. 
In other words, it interferes with it. It's almost like um, when you're, uh, I guess this is really old school, when you're driving across country maybe and you were tuning your radio and it would come in really clear, but then you'd go to a place where there wasn't a signal and you couldn't get the song anymore. And then you'd go a little further and then it would come in clear again or you'd have to like micromanage it to get that really clear signal. We need to get a really clear signal the silence for all of our cells to communicate with each other and for us to be tapped in to the information that we're getting from the world around us. And when we have a traumatic experience, it's like that, that signal goes down or is compromised. And we feel that in the physical body because of the way the energy densifies in the physical body. So it first affects the energy body, and then those energy signals don't communicate as clearly with each other. And then that goes to the molecular level, to the folding of your proteins, to how everything works in the physical body. That becomes compromised as well. On a small way of compromise, maybe you've got a, a sore muscle or um, you feel just a little sad. On a larger way, maybe you broke your leg or you have full-blown depression or something even bigger than that starts to manifest in the physical or the mental body. When you start to work with the energy of trauma, releasing the energy static from your energy body, you start to clear away that detritus, that waste that is interfering with the clarity of your signal. And once that waste is gone, it's like once you take out the trash, the trash is gone. Now you're always generating more stuff, right? Because you're alive and you're eating and drinking and you're in the world and you have experiences. But you take out that big broken TV set in your living room, it's gone, it's gone. It doesn't come back, it's not gonna creep back in. A lot of people worry, like, if I, if I release this, does it come back? No. Once you release this, especially these big traumatic experiences, they're gone. The residue is gone. And the energy then starts to come back into coherence again, into tune. You sing your song again. You shine your light again. So um, that's how it happens. Okay, interesting. Thank you for that. Um, let's get a question here from Helen. You, you've sort of touched on the, the response to this, but let's go into her question. Uh, she says, is there any meaning as to the location of my stress symptoms? For example, I feel a staticky tension all the way across my upper abdomen below my rib cage, whereas other people feel it in their lower gut in the form of pain. Will the location of the symptoms change the method of treatment? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, I'm going to tweak the word that you use, treatment, because we're not treating anything. We're not diagnosing anything, and we're not treating anything. What we're doing is bringing all nine of the energy systems in your body back into balance so that your body can do what it is built to do, and that is heal. Your body can heal anything. It can heal a broken leg, it can heal a cut on your finger, it can heal cancer, it can heal depression, it can heal anything. Your body is built to do that. What we're doing is getting the, like I said, the noise out of the signal, the junk out of the signal so that your energy systems can be clear, run on the right pathways in the right direction, on the right patterns that they're meant to. And you will find that your patterns of unease in the body will be different and unique to you than anybody else's. And what we'll learn in this course is um, where things arise for you and why they arise for you in a specific area versus where they'll arise for me in a specific area, how we interpret and digest our stresses differently. And, um, that that's a really beautiful realization that you already have. So I feel this here. That's great. You're already tuned in deeply to the physical body. So you feel something here. We'll interpret, well, what area of that body, it, it, what, what governs the area of that body that you're feeling that pain in? And we'll move that out. But I also want to say that 
it is a holistic practice. So when you start working with energy in a very directed, specific way, like energy medicine yoga, and even more specific because we're using energy medicine yoga to target trauma, stress, and anxiety specifically, the little bits that you start to do start to have effects that you would not maybe have anticipated or expected because energy follows a hierarchy. So once you start to get your energy balanced again, and once you start to heal different parts of your energy system that might be wonky, then the energy that's now freed to do the work of healing you goes to wherever your energy body needs to heal first which may not be what you think you need to heal first. And Donna tells this beautiful story. My teacher, Donna Eden, many of you know her. She healed herself from MS, among many other things. But when she started doing energy medicine, which she created after she healed herself, when she started doing energy medicine to heal her MS, all these other things started to heal first. First, her allergies went away. And then her fatigue went away. It was several, several, several steps before her MS resolved itself because the body was like, look, you can't eat anything. We need to get these food allergies under control. She just wanted to walk, but the body has its own pathways to healing. So we are very specific in going on those pathways and clearing and cleaning and organizing those pathways. And then the body takes over and that's the beauty. Your body is going to heal you. I'm not doing anything. Your body is healing you. All I'm going to do is show you how to activate those energy systems and how to take care of them, how to have a dialogue, a communication, how to understand the language that your body is speaking. So why is it speaking to you right here? We'll figure that out and you'll understand it. And then you'll speak back to it and say, okay, this is what we're going to do now. Okay, great. Um, let me go into a question that a, a lot of people are asking. In fact, this is the most common question I'm getting here. Uh, people are uh, concerned that maybe they have physical limitations. Uh, are, are the yoga poses on the floor, on a mat? How, how physical are we going to get here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great question, uh, especially since we are talking about trauma. And a lot of you who want to heal trauma may have had physical trauma that um, that causes limitations. And um, you're not going to want to do a one arm handstand, which, by the way, don't worry, we are not going to do any one arm handstands. Um, the practice is very accessible. We'll have two students with me every week on the mat. One will be doing uh, doing the asana, which are the physical poses, on the mat as if you're in a standard yoga class. The other student will be in a chair doing modifications, and I will be standing and teaching, but also jumping in and doing other modifications as needed. So there will always be different levels of accessibility so that you can um, modify as your physical body um, is guiding you to do. But the other piece that I want to be really, really clear about is the power of your visualization. So even if you have no physical movement at all, if you're in a wheelchair and you are not doing downward facing dog, you're visualizing yourself doing downward facing dog actually fires the neurons that transform in the body. And so you have an effect happening even if you're not moving the body. And Donna has told some incredible stories of people in the hospital that can't move at all and they do their energy work, they do their routine, they do move the energy with their mind and they heal so much faster. They're not doing the movements, they're not stretching and doing all of this, they're visualizing what's happening and the results are happening in the physical body. And so I want to encourage you to, um, to step in no matter where you are with this and not to feel that you've got limitations. They, there are the practices will be a full yoga practice an energy medicine yoga practice, which is in its essence, all about healing. Anyway, that's my belief of a yoga practice. A yoga is an energetic practice and it's towards healing so that you can be present and grounded and Um, and a spark of light in your own life. So this is not a hot vinyasa flow. This is not any of that acrobatic aerobic yoga at all. This is literally about accessing the energy systems, 
moving them in the ways that the energy is most optimized. So if you have any fear around it, we're going to talk about fear on week two. I encourage you, this little thing that we did at the beginning of class, maybe just do a little bit of a thump there. And if you can't move your arms, visualize a little bit of a thump, visualize a little Tarzan action going here. And that will help you release your fear and come and join us and, and see how this practice is going to work for you no matter where you are in your body, mind, or spirit right now. Okay, perfect. Thank you for putting people's minds at ease. That was really a lot of people asking. Uh, a related uh, question, Arlene wants to know, how long do you need to practice daily to get results? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, you know, I used to say that I created energy medicine yoga because I'm the quintessential lazy yogi. And um, I didn't want to spend three, four, five, six hours on the mat every day to be able to live my life. So I created this practice that works with your energy primarily within a yoga context. And what I discovered is the results are so much more dynamic and much more powerful when you access the energy primarily instead of sort of as an afterthought or as a just something that kind of happens, even though you don't really know why. So that said, it really depends on what you're working with. And I, don't, I, I hesitate to say how quickly you want results, but you know, energy has patterns and forms habits. And so our goal here is to rehabituate your energy, to repattern your energy so that it is working optimally. It is functioning at its highest level. And so depending on where you are on the spectrum of your energy, either working perfectly all the time or maybe dormant and you haven't ever worked with energy before in a very specific way, that is also going to speak to how much time you want to devote to the practice. I would say, you know, anywhere between 20 minutes a day is awesome. It is a beautiful practice and you can really get your energies humming along and organized and coherent. And you can even get them that way in less than 20 minutes, 10 minutes a day. The, the key is to have consistency. Instead of doing an hour and a half once a week, do 15 or 20 minutes every day and take a day off or do a half an hour every other day. Ideally, you fall in love with this. I have students now who can't be without this. This is their thing, their go-to. And also what I'll say, what happens is as your energy gets coherent through doing these practices and repatterning your energy, you have more space in your day, more time in your day because you become more efficient. That's what coherence is. It's the least amount of input for the most amount of output. So when your energy is coherent for you, you study less and do better on your exams. You work less diligently, not diligently is not the right word. You work less hard and get more work done because everything is working smoothly. You're not flowing against the river. That's what happens when your energy isn't going in the right direction is you're literally rowing against the current. And if any of you have ever done that, rowing upstream against the current, it takes a lot of work. And what we do here is get the energies all in line and then we're flowing with the river. So half as many strokes to get twice as far opens up so much time in your day and then you might want to give yourself more of this luxurious practice. It's joyful, too. This is not a slog. This is not like, oh, I got to get to CrossFit or, oh, I got to get to my step class. This is like, oh, I get to spend this time in communion with my own energy and, uh, and build my habit field. And even beyond that kind of mumbo jumbo, I get to just be present and feel really good for 15, 20, 30, 60 minutes a day, it's a gift. So my hope is that it starts to feel like a gift and not one more thing on your to-do list that you have to check off. 
All right. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, we're here with Lauren Walker learning about her upcoming course, Energy Medicine Yoga for Healing, which begins Monday, February 24th. And you can log on to emyogacourse.com for all the details and to register. So let's get back to questions. We've got a question here from Deb who says, I know I have blocks and really need to help release the, or really need help to release them. So we will be able to release without identifying or telling the story. That's what you said. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Um, (laughs) So it's interesting that you know where the blocks are, right? And you maybe even know what the blocks are. And that's beautiful. That's like another sort of step towards that healing. But you don't need to know what they are to know that there's something that's holding you back. And we're going to go through these practices that start to let your emotional energy flow along these very specific pathways and out of the body without having to stop and say, well, what is it that I'm afraid of? Or what is it that I'm fearful of? Or what is it that I'm angry about? Now, you may want to stop and investigate some of those things, but it's not essential that you do so because those stories behind whatever it is that you're angry about or that you're grieving about, those stories hold this energy but the energy can be released from the story. And that is the freedom of this work with things like PTSD, which is this limbic loop of a story that keeps going around and around and actually has a physical effect. That story releases the same stress hormones that were released at the original trauma that that you had that is now post your post that trauma, but you still have this stress that happens all of the time. So what we do is we disconnect that we disconnect the story from the physiological response to the story. And the story will be there still, but the energy behind the story won't be there. And so you don't need to retell the story to release that energy And that's something that I really love about this. I spent a lot of years in therapy talking and talking and talking. And I just thought, wow, like I can tell you every detail about why I'm so messed up, but I'm still messed up. And it wasn't until I started releasing the energy of being messed up that things started to change. And now I can still tell you the story. And I told you guys the other day, the story, this happened and then this happened and then this happened and then this happened. And, um, but the energy that held me in that vortex of struggle and pain and trauma, that doesn't exist anymore. It's just not there. And so even though I got a little, uh, a little of a clem, a little teary eye telling, you know, uh, PJ's murder was huge. It was so traumatic and I can cry about it, but that doesn't mean I'm thrown back into that abyss of, of pain and despair. And, Crying is actually a really beautiful thing. I kind of went off on a tangent, but um, uh, your tears release excess hormones from the body through the liver. And so who, the liver is what digests your hormones, and your tears release excess hormones. So you think about it, and we talked about that the other day, that uh, cortisol and adrenaline, those are hormones that are released into the body. And if you don't use them up, they start to break the body down. Well, guess what? Crying is one way that you release excess hormone from the body. And maybe some of you have had that experience, right? You you went through something really intense and all of a sudden it's over and you just sit there and you kind of cry for a minute. And you're like, well, I don't even know why I'm crying. It wasn't that big of a deal. I was on the ski hill a month or so ago and on a super easy path and my ski fell off and I fell and I wasn't hurt at all. It was like on an easy little thing. and But I was just so shaken. And I put my ski back and I got myself, okay, everybody, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then I started crying. I was like, why am I crying? I just fell on like a green run. I'm totally fine. But I had that fight or flight response. And then I released it through those tears. And I got on the chairlift and I was fine. So I just wanted to to share that piece that, um, that, I mean, everything is connected, but there's ways that we're going to separate them out so that you can deal with all of your experiences because life is going to keep happening. That's our goal. That's what we want. We want life to keep happening and happening and happening. And that means good and challenging 
all at the same time. So we want to celebrate the good and we want to be able to really get through the challenging with as much grace and spirit and open heartedness as possible. Hmm. Beautifully put. Thank you. Um, let's go to a question here from Kathy who wants to know at age 72, is it harder to make a shift? You know, that's a beautiful, beautiful question. I'm going to say this energy doesn't age. It is ageless. It is timeless. Um, I just graduated my first cohort of master teachers and I have an 82 year old, uh, beautiful teacher up in Canada. And she's so excited to uh, move forward into this next chapter of her life. And she spent a year and a half studying with me to uh, find out and understand these new tools. And she's been studying, she studied dance and she was an athlete and she's been you know, studying this stuff forever. And this was something new and she was really excited about it and the changes that she went through and the traumas that she healed. She lost a son. And then during the training, she lost her husband of I think 50 years. And this work really helped her to release that. So absolutely, absolutely. You are young. You're a spring chicken. So yeah, you can change any time. You know, one of the things I love so much, uh, if you know, Louise Hay, she was on a tapping summit a while ago and I think she was in her late 80s and she was still working with healing the things that had afflicted her in her youth. And so I believe that we can transform and stay curious and open for our whole lives. And um, so I hope you do. I hope you join us because I think you'll have a lot of fun. All right. Thank you. Um, here's a question from Deb. Actually, it's two questions from Deb. Uh, first is, what are some signs that we may be doing too much energy work during the sessions or the course? Uh, and the second question is, are there any contraindications for autoimmune disorders? Hmm. Too much. So I'm going to kind of maybe meld those together and thinking maybe if you're struggling with an autoimmune disorder um, and overtaxing yourself energetically, then you may feel more fatigue. Um, you know, what we're working on here, what I'm going to teach you is the language of the body. And the more that you tune in to that language, the more that you will know the answers to those questions. So when is too much? Your body will say, I'm good. I'm complete right now. Or your body will say, no, we can keep going. This is good. These two tools, I, I, you're going to see these again and again and again in this course because they do a lot of things. I've only told you a few things that they do right now, but they do a lot of things. And this is something as well that is going to help to support you um, in that practice. You know, the other piece about what is contraindicated for autoimmune, you know, autoimmune is a triple warmer out of balance issue. And if you listen to the call with, with Stephen, you know a little bit about triple warmer, this really intense, potentially or occasionally aggressive energy that, um, that can really throw us. It's the fight or flight response embodied. And so the work of this course is really going to be integral to helping you bring that autoimmune issue under control. If you went to any energy medicine practitioner, which I would also encourage any of you, if you're struggling with something really intense, you may benefit from a one-on-one -on -one work with a practitioner who can energy test everything and really see specifically what's going on with you. This course will be wonderful as well, but this is obviously, you know, we're teaching a lot of people at once. So it's different than me in a room alone with you and testing about what's going on and where, what meridians are out and what chakras might be compromised. But this whole course is geared towards calming and evolving that triple warmer response from being this out of balance warrior that's attacking you. So in an autoimmune issue, the body has stopped being able to distinguish between you and other. And that is the essence of health. That is the essence of health is boundaries. And in autoimmune, the boundaries are messed up. And so that triple warmer doesn't understand that it is fighting itself. 
And so in this course, we're going to evolve triple warmer from that overactive, hypervigilant, everything's a problem energy to a warrior of the heart energy, a guardian of your being energy, an energy that supports you through anything that you're going through. That's really the role that triple warmer wants to play in your life. And so, um, having an autoimmune issue, this work is just beautifully tailored right for that. And I would encourage you and anybody else that's dealing with something that's really specific because we don't have the time or space here to really work one-on-one with you on specific health challenges. Um, I would really encourage you to reach out to an energy medicine practitioner. And all of this work will support that because all of this work is about getting all of your energy systems balanced. And anytime you have an ailment, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, Anything that is not in your perfect functional flow of life is an energetic issue first. Before it's a physical issue, before it's an emotional issue, it is an energetic issue. And so that's the beauty of energy medicine yoga. That's why less time equals more benefits because it's an energetic issue and energy it's actually really easy to work with, and you're going to find that out. You already found that out, right? Holding your forehead, all of a sudden you're not stressed about the dog paws on your shirt. Um, it can work really quickly to shift things. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I think so. Thank you for that. Um, looking at the clock, we have time for a few more questions. But before we take those, uh, I want to give a few details about the course because people are asking about that as well. And I'll go ahead and field those. Um, this is going to be, I think, just a fascinating seven-week journey uh, with Lauren, uh, with her expert guidance, where you'll learn to release emotional energy that can cause stress and disease uh, using ancient techniques and modern science to rebalance and heal your energy, mind, body, and spirit. And the seven-week course takes place on Mondays at 3 p.m. Pacific, starting Monday, February 24th. And if you can't join us live, as I mentioned earlier, that's fine. You won't miss the teachings because you will receive audio and video recordings, transcripts, and all course handouts on your course homepage. Also, we offer a no-risk money-back guarantee on all of our courses, giving you a full two weeks until March 9th in this case to make sure that you absolutely love it. And as an added option, all participants are welcome to connect in a private Facebook community group so you can connect with one another. Uh, Also, everyone who registers receives the Energy Medicine Yoga for Healing bonus collection. And oh my gosh, this is a huge collection. Good stuff here. Uh, First, you'll receive a video dialogue with Lauren and Angela Farmer entitled The Epic Journey to Healing. You'll also get a live biofield tuning session with Eileen McCusick called The Power of the Field, Your Aura, and Sound. Then you'll receive a video dialogue with Lauren and Marie Manicherry entitled We Are All Guided, We Are All Blessed, We Are All Gifted. You'll also get a video dialogue with Lauren and Ellen Meredith called The Language Your Body Speaks. Plus, you'll receive a video dialogue with Lauren and Dr. David Feinstein entitled A Scientific Perspective on Tapping. Then you'll get a video dialogue with Lauren and Dr. Craig Weiner called Tapping for Calmness and Clarity. A video dialogue with Lauren and Dr. Melanie Smith called Uniting the Two Sides of Your Nervous System to Rewire and Heal Your Life. And another video dialogue with Lauren and Susan Stone, this one called Connect with Your Soul to Heal Trauma. And when you register by Midnight Pacific on Tuesday, February 18th, you receive this extra gift, a video dialogue with Lauren Walker and Anna Forrest entitled, What You Do Matters, How Healing Your Trauma Helps Heal the World. So that's a lot of good stuff. Uh, Before we get back to questions, though, Lauren, let me ask you, uh, what are you most looking forward to sharing in your upcoming course? I'm sure there's a lot, but what's, what's your best thing about this? Yeah, that is a tough one. This whole course I'm so excited about. Um, I love all of those bonuses, and it's so great to hear all of them out there listed like that. These teachers are incredible, and I've uh, reached out to many of them. They were part of my healing journey, and I'm excited to share their wisdom with you. It's it's powerful, honestly. 
that alone is worth the course. They're so incredible. Um, the piece I think I'm most excited about is the live component. And again, it doesn't matter if you're there live with us. What we're going to do is um, kind of enter into this morphic field of healing together. And I'll explain more about morphic fields when we begin. But it's literally creating this cohesive energetic field in which all of our healing and all of our work helps each of us to get stronger and to heal faster. And it's incredible how this works. I have seen this over and over again in all of my my classes. I do trainings and something that's really difficult to teach in one training. Three trainings later, it's really easy to teach to everybody. And the reason is there's this field of information and knowledge that grows. And the more people that enter that field and enter that knowledge, it makes it easier for the next group to learn that. And so when we're all together, all of the wisdom that each of you bring, that each of you bring, it's not just me, it's your essence. And you have so much wisdom within you. You don't even know it. You are, you are a wisdom body. And you bring that and you bring your pain and you bring your struggles and you bring your joy and you bring your hope for everybody else to heal. And that creates this field in which everybody is lifted up and everybody heals a little bit faster and everyone feels more supportive and more supported. And so it's a really beautiful phenomenon and I'm really excited about it. And what's powerful even more about these fields is that they are not limited to space and time. And so if you watch these videos uh, in a month, or if you take this course three years from now, you are still part of this field and you still benefit from the energy that we are putting in moment by moment. So I think that's my biggest excitement uh, for this. And, you know, I really have healed myself from some crazy stuff, some really yucky, crazy stuff. And I love hearing from you, from my students, from my clients, from my teachers, how this work helps them heal. It is mind blowing. And my goal is to have the world heal. And this is how it starts. So I'm excited to be start of a revolution towards global transformation so that we have a planet where everybody is supported feels held, is whole, has what they need. That may seem like a huge sort of naive desire, but I will tell you this, that is what starts transformation. In you personally, that little tendril of belief, I know I can do better. I know I can heal this. I know I can get beyond this. I know I can live a life that I just have dreamed of so far. That little tendril is the same little tendril that says, I know we can heal these global problems. I know we can heal the divides. I know we can release the anger and come into cooperation. That's the promise of these fields and this course and you joining me, that we join together and become one field, force field of power, of transformation. That's a little bit longer than you wanted, but that's how passionate I am about this work. Not at all. Not at all. In fact, what you're saying reminds me of, uh, we've all heard uh, the line from Gandhi, be the change you wish to see in the world. And I know if you're stuck in, in these kinds of icky states, you can't be the change. You're being this. So that's what you're projecting out into the world. So that's, that's what I take away from what you're doing. And that's why I'm personally really looking forward to the course. So, so there's my two cents. Um, let's go back to some questions. Here. I, just, I just add one more thing to that. I just, that, that's so beautiful that, you know, that be the change. And what I want to say is, you know, this, this field phenomenon and that things get easier I went through this crazy struggle and created this work so you don't have to. You don't have to stay in the little struggle or the big struggle or the medium struggle that you're in right now. You can free yourself and it's going to be easier already because of the groundwork that I've laid, that my teachers have laid, so that you can enter in already to this field that's there to support you immediately. Some of you might already feel this. A lot of people have already signed up for this course, and that is the field already growing. 
So yes, be the change, be part of this community. I hope that you do. All right, great, thank you. Uh, let's see, we got a question here from Annie who says, uh, if you can't quite move an area of stuck energy, are there ways to at least change the quality of the energy to lessen its impact? Can you repeat that again? If you can't move the area of stuck energy, is that what you said? Well, uh, let's take the, the word area out of there. If you can't quite move some stuck energy, if you can't make it go away, can you at least change the quality to lessen its impact? So I'm, I'm going to make an assumption here that you've already done a fair bit of energy work with this area that you're talking about and you're unable to move that. Um, if that's the case, I would say let's get in there again and try some different techniques. Maybe some of the things that we're going to do in this course are different than things you've tried before. Um, like I said, it might not be local. You might think, oh, okay, I've got an injury here, so I'm going to work on my shoulder. But it might not actually be that area that needs to get shifted for that energy to move. Um, so I would encourage you to sort of check out all of these different techniques that we're going to do. And absolutely, you can change the quality of, of that energy. Um, but I think we can move it. I, I, I'd like to maybe into that Facebook group, you can give me a little bit more specifics about what you're talking about. And, and if you already have tried a bunch of things, but, um, you know, anything is healable. Everything is healable. And what my teacher has said so often that is so inspir inspirational is she's never met a person who couldn't heal. And that is, um, healing is different than curing. So you may not, come back to a place that you were before, say, an injury happened. Um, and I, I used this example the other day. If you are in a, a, an accident and, you know, you lose a limb, you're not going to cure that. Your limb is not going to grow back unless you're a child and then there's still some abilities for you to do that. But as we grow older, you're not going to be able to grow that limb back, but you are going to be able to heal the pain that comes along with that, the emotional pain that comes along with that, the um, the psychic pain and the physical um, the physical pains around that, and so it's just it's a clarification of of the difference between healing and curing. Healing is we move forward into our best lives, and that life might be a ninety degree turn from where you thought you were going when your str stress hit or your trauma hit, but you still are going to live a beautiful, empowered, and purposeful life. So that's a long answer to your question that, yes, energy can shift and move and transform and change. So let's just get curious and see what we can do with it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, how about, here's a question, what can I do if I'm in a full-blown panic attack? Do you have an exercise for that? I do have an exercise for that. Um, I feel like uh, Elizabeth Warren. I have a plan for that. I do have an exercise for that. Um, I'm going to show that to you um, in the uh, in the course because that comes in the fire week because panic and anxiety is a fire practice. But already I'm going to give you one thing right here. There it is. And here's another right here. And here's a third. Take an inhale, and you're going to exhale with the sound H-A. Let's do that right now. Inhale. So that's something that you can do right now. And then in the course, I'll be a little farther away from the camera, and it's a little bit... Um, a little more movement that, that you're going to do to, um, to bring the fire down off of a panic attack. But you can do those things right now with that HA breath until we get to that week. So I hope that helps. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, let's see if we can fit another question in here. This is from Aaron, who says, I absorb other people's sorrow when they share something sad with me. Is there something I can do to release that change in my or that that change in energy to protect myself? 
Absolutely, absolutely. And um, and we're going to learn a lot of techniques to uh, protect yourself from other people's energies. I know that a lot of people, especially if you're drawn to energy work, who are empaths and who pick up other people's energies. And even if you're not an empath, we have mirror neurons. And so we do, I mean, that is the nature of being a human and actually animals as well have the same capacity that we feel each other's experiences. And that can be really challenging if you feel them too much and you get thrown off of yourself. So we're going to uh, learn a lot of techniques to protect yourself and then again, this whole course is about releasing and releasing and releasing because energy needs to move. We're constantly moving it in and out and in and out. The, the worst thing that can happen for energy is energy gets stuck. Stuck energy causes pain, densifies in the body and causes all sorts of problems. Energy needs to move and we want to keep it constantly moving. And that's one of the things that I'm going to teach you is how to keep that energy moving out so that you can be open to new energies coming in. So yes, we have all kinds of techniques to help you with that. And again, until we take the course, these things, I want you guys to really practice these. The course starts next week. I want you to practice these and use them when something comes up that feels um, difficult to digest and assimilate because what happens is you start to forget that you have tools, especially if things get really heightened and really intense. So maybe write these down on a sticky note or just start to practice, you know, uh, sitting on the subway on your way to work with your fingers here or driving your car or walking the kids to school and, you know, just keeping that in the forefront of your mind and notice if you go through your days a little bit calmer. And then we'll start to, to get, go in a little bit deeper and, and get these more specific practices for specific things as we go. Okay, great. I know I said let's squeeze one question in, but let's get one more because we do have another minute or so, and I'm seeing a lot of people asking about this. What about the freeze response? Yeah, so the freeze response is just as powerful, and it is part of that fight, flight, freeze response. And it's the same thing. The same stress chemicals come through the body, and in that case, they're really not used um, at all. They they kind of, well, they're used to keep you incredibly still, but um, they have the same uh, negative physiology that happens when they're not released after you start to move again. And so um, it really is that, that's, you know, we say fight or flight response, but it really is fight, flight or freeze response. And you see that, you know, again, back to that interview that I did with Stephen, where I was telling the story and I didn't use these two, these tools. And so while I was talking and I seemed like I was moving, there was a part of my energy that froze the deer in the headlights this is the first time I've ever told this incredibly traumatic story. And it's being told to thousands of people. And I had this internal freeze. I even remember at one point kind of going up to touch this point and I couldn't do it. So that is what happens is this fight, flight, or freeze. They, it, it compromises your ability to think intelligently and creatively. And so all of these tools, these two that we know right now for that fight flight is also for that freeze response that, that comes when we have some sort of trauma. Um, because again, energy needs to move. So when you freeze, your energy stops moving and you go into essentially into a deep fear response in the body that immobilizes you. And so, um, We'll talk about that more as well. And, and thank you for bringing that up. We did use that a little bit, uh, that language in some of the material, but um, it's sort of that fight or flight is really what most people say. But you are correct who asked that question that it is fight, flight, or freeze. And a lot of us um, have that freeze response in, in traumatic experiences. And, and, um, and I remember that myself, that I go into that freeze response. It's usually like, wow, is this really happening? And I don't even know what to do. I'm just going to stop everything. And it's not even conscious. So um, that said, those chemicals are still floating through the body. And so we'll, um, we'll work a little bit with that also. All right. Well, I think we squeezed in as many questions as we can. This has been just a fascinating conversation. Um, I want to thank our viewers for being with us today and for sending in all those questions, which made the fascinating conversation. Uh, once again, Energy Medicine Yoga for Healing starts Monday, February 24th. And again, you can visit emyogacourse.com to learn more and to register. And Laura, before we cut you loose, do you have any final thoughts? Oh, 
Um, I think I've pretty much said all that I want to say. I'm excited for this course. The weeks to come are looking really beautiful. And um, I'm just really excited to share this with you and to see how it lands with all of you and to hear your stories of transformation and healing. So I hope you join us and, and spread the word so that we can really start this um, this global transformation. The more that we heal ourselves, the more that we heal the world. And we really need that right now. We need that for each of us and we need that for all of us. So I hope you join us and I'm excited to meet you all. All right. Well, I thank you again, Lauren. It has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. I'm personally really looking forward to your course. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me and thank all of you for joining in as well. Yes, once again, thank you to everyone who joined us today. On behalf of all of us at the Shift Network, I wish you well and look forward to having you on this course or perhaps another one in the future. Have a great day, everyone.